What's up, everyone? Welcome to Hockey Culture. This is the place where we're trying to change the culture of hockey, one interview at a time. And today's guest, we're lucky to have Edmonton Oilers power forward, Jujar Kara. Jujar, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I like to have a wide range of guests, whether hockey playing, people involved in the hockey community, and I'm always curious as to what got them involved in the game of hockey. You grew up in Surrey, BC. I played in Vancouver for one season. Uh, take me back to growing up in Surrey and what was your motivating factor in participating in the game of hockey? Yeah, I think, um, first off, uh, I used to watch you play all the time uh, growing up. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, as kids, we – our parents let us play, play you know, multiple sports. And one of them we got to play was hockey. And, um, you know, I think like every every kid in Canada, once you, once you start playing, you kind of fall in love with it. And, um, you know, our parents – our parents were great. They – they sacrificed a lot for us to play and they took a lot of time out of their day. Well, whenever anyone says they used to watch me play, it makes me feel really old. I'm 46 now. I try to think that I'm 26. <laughs> so I want to thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but you mentioned growing up in Surrey, 30% uh, South Asian community uh, there in Surrey. Uh, did it make it easier to get involved in the game of hockey because the community was so diverse just outside of Vancouver? Um, you know what, I think, I think it did because even the way I started, I played, I started off playing soccer and one of my soccer coaches there, his, uh, so one of my teammates, he started playing hockey too. And he kind of mentioned it to, to our parents and that, that's kind of what got the idea for, for them to kind of put us in. And, uh, you know, they, they were always fans growing up too, and, but they never got a chance to play just with, um, you know, my grandparents being immigrants and them kind of um coming over and so yeah when I got the chance I mean it was something so new even to the family and it was it was super exciting and did you play ball hockey I mean I was a ball hockey genius I'm the first person to pump my own tires every chance I get I love playing ball hockey and that's actually what motivated me to play ice hockey because I can make these moves in the street with the tennis ball but I couldn't skate to save my life so my friends would always chirp me and say yeah nice try Anson do that on the ice so was that the same kind of experience that you had? Did you play street hockey growing up a lot too? Um, yeah, street hockey definitely. We, uh, myself and my cousins, there were seven of us. We spent a lot of time at my uh, grandma's house in Surrey, and just in the neighborhood, we had a cul-de-sac. And uh, you know, looking up to my older cousins, uh, they used to play. They used to play on the like play street hockey as well. And so, uh, you know, we kind of followed it. And yeah, it was that's kind of where we started as well. Was it tough to have your parents allow you to play hockey? Like, weren't they big volleyball athletes? I mean, was, was sports a big thing in the care of house, household? It was a big thing, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, my mom, she, she played collegiate um, volleyball. My dad played provincial volleyball and basketball. And, um, you know, but those were sports that they could play through schooling and all that but hockey was was you know it's a little bit more expensive and um they never got the opportunities when they were younger and i remember my parents saying that on saturday nights they would watch they'd have like three channels and one of them was cbc so they got to watch a lot of hockey and um just from them then they started becoming fans and uh you know as soon as we got old enough they they allowed us to play you're talking about people you looked up to your cousins when you played street hockey was there any other NHL players you looked up to? I know Robin Bawa and my boy Manny Maholtra were, were two players of South Asian descent. Um, I know when I grew up, I liked Mike Bossy because there wasn't many black players in the league that I could look up to. Was, was there any right. players in the league that you tried to pat in your game after or you looked up to when you grew up? Uh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't get a chance to watch uh, Robin Bawa, but I watched, I watched Manny Maholtra play in Vancouver as well growing up. But... Uh, you know, my, my favorite player growing up was Todd Bertuzzi. That West Coast <laughs> Express line was uh, was something special. And, you know, the, the game he played, he had size and skill. And, uh, you know, they were a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, I could second that. I had a good seat playing behind those guys. And I put Danny and Hank there in Vancouver. So the West Coast Express uh, was a fun line uh, to watch in practice and a great line to to play against in practice, too. Uh, you have one of the unique experiences of playing both college hockey at Michigan Tech and also playing the dub, the WHL Major Junior Hockey in Canada for Everett. Uh, what are some of the similarities and what are some of the differences 
of playing in both college and junior hockey? And also, why did you leave Tech to go back and play junior hockey? Uh, well, I left, I left Tech just because I had the opportunity, um, you know, to sign a professional deal. At, at that time, I think I was 18 years old. And, um, you know, it was super exciting. Everything happened really fast from when I played my first year uh, in Prince George to – you know, being drafted and then going to Michigan Tech and then being able to sign a professional contract. So, um, you know, there was a big discussion with my parents because education was always important. But, um, you know, for me, I, I think I wanted to take the next step and uh, signing, like, I mean, signing a professional deal was, was always my, my dream playing hockey. So that's kind of how that, that happened. Um, but some of the sim similarities, I mean, they're both great leagues. They're both fast-paced, but they're different styles of game for sure. I mean, you see in college, there's a lot more – there's a lot of older guys, and uh, you play against stronger guys. You have to make it work when you're coming in as a younger guy. You know, you don't really – you haven't really been working out that long. And, I mean, especially, especially when I was growing up, there wasn't that much training compared to what there is now. Um, but you know, the WHL, I think it's a great league. It's definitely younger, but the, the skill that's in, uh, the WHL is amazing. And now you've taken your talents to the National Hockey League. Uh, there's times I would fly back to Toronto to visit my parents and an Uber driver or car service. And I'd hear the game going on because I could tell by the last names that are being called, but I could tell it's in a different language. I want right. to talk about how big the game of hockey is. Hockey night in Punjabi. A uh, good friend, Hunter Ryan Singh, we had a conversation with him, how big that is. Because if I owned a team or if I ran a hockey club, the first thing I would do was take the top five languages in my city or in the country, and I would recreate that same broadcast using that language. I mean, because I think it would help people speaking that native tongue understand the sport itself. I mean, speak about that and that South Asian community like Hockey Night in Canada, Punjabi, and what that's done to elevate the interest in the game of hockey. Yeah, that, uh, you know, that step alone has, has been such a huge step in the community from what I've seen. I've met, I've met majority of those, uh, you know, those guys that are working um, with Hockey Night in Punjabi. And, uh, you know, they're amazing, too. They make it fun for everyone. And uh, like you said, like now, even for my grandparents, they would watch the games on CBC, the Hockey Night in Canada games in Punjabi, and they would uh, understand it a lot better and kind of have a better understanding for the game. And, I think especially with, um, you know, with our culture, there's a lot, a lot of people immigrating and just to have that, um, the similarities there, what they can understand, I think it, it pushes them to put their, the next generation in, in hockey as well. And um, as you know, Surrey is a, has a huge South Asian community. And um, I mean, all over Canada, they actually do. And just having that, it, it just, it's such a cool such a cool experience for them to watch and the enthusiasm and being able to understand that, that, you know, the kids, the kids are allowed to um, show that they love these sports and it's easier for them to understand than just trying to convince them that they, they would like to play. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's a huge step. What they're doing is amazing. Are you really recognized when you go back home to Surrey by people in the South Asian community uh, there's been times I've been at hockey events walking down the street with, say, a popular player like Mark Messier or Brian Leach, like future Hall of Famers, and there'd be black people in the streets that would see us, and they'd have no clue who the hell Mess was, but they'd be like, Carter, Carter, what's up, Carter? They knew who I was. Do you have a similar reaction, too, with people in the South Asian community when they see you uh, walking around? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, there's, I, there's, it's, all, it's always so weird. I mean, there's always times where – you could go unnoticed for forever long. And then there's times where you're in the right areas at the right times. And, um, you know, especially walking around rinks and stuff now that there's so many uh, South Asian players playing that. Yeah, I do like the smiles I see. And it's cool being in the role that I'm in, just having the opportunity to, uh, you know, be a role model and all that. And, um, but it's, it's super cool seeing the next generation come up. And now that you've established yourself as an NHL player, uh, do you feel need to figure out a way to how to make the game more diverse? When you first break in the league, all you're really trying to do is try to tread water. You're just trying to right. establish yourself and try to stay in the league. And then once you've got your hooks in, you can start thinking bigger than just yourself. 
Have you started to think about how you could maybe diversify the game of hockey within your local community and even on the global level? You know, I think I'm getting to that point right now. I think um, for the past three years, like you said, you're treading, you're treading water and you're trying to pick up traction as much as you can. And, um, you know, now the older I'm getting, the more I'm seeing um, just, you know, even the role that I play towards the South Asian community, it's, it's really cool to see. Maybe at first I was just kind of worried about doing my own thing, but now, you know, even taking the time out to talk to these, talk to these kids coming up and, um, you know, hanging out with them, just being able to describe my journey. And, um, you know, I think there, there's definitely the, or as time's going to go on, there's definitely going to be more things that I'm going to want to do. And do you get a sense playing for the Oilers now where there's so much attention on your team? You've got Leon Dreisaitl, one of the best players in the league. Uh, Connor McDavid, same exact thing. Your team has high expectations on you. But you also look at the history of the Oilers, all the cups they've won, but also the history with diversity within the organization. And you see all the diversity that you have with your team this year with all these different players. Like, do you think about, listen, we're one of the most diverse teams in the league. Is this something you think about on a regular basis? Um, you know, probably not on a regular basis because I think we have like, we have such a good group here that, I mean, everybody's seen as, as just another hockey player, a player, you know, re going for the same goal as winning a Stanley Cup. But when you sit back and look at it and kind of, you know, they have like the diversity month and all that. And, um, you see, yeah, what Edmonton, you know, what we have here, it's, it's definitely special. It's, it's cool to see, it's cool to be on a team where, um, you know, more and more cultures or races are even coming into um, the game and being fortunate enough to play with two or three other uh, guys on our team. It's, it's cool just to see what they, what they do for their community, especially, I mean, like Ethan Bear. We go wherever all over uh, North America to play, and it seems, to, seems like he has a fan um, in every single building. And, you know, that's, that's really cool to see the excitement they have is, is unbelievable as well. That's amazing. So that's something that you pick up on as a teammate. You could sense that? For sure. For sure. Yeah. You know, the, the impact he's had on his community is, it's been amazing. And just seeing that, it kind of, you know, helps me reflect on my experiences as well. Seeing it as a, um, as a, out, or not an outsider as much, but seeing it from the other side. And, um, you know, it's, it's really cool. That's amazing. Now, is this something that leads to further conversations maybe with the different groups within the room as to how you could spread that love or how everyone could come together and make an even greater impact instead of just focusing on each respective community? Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, um, when we get to the point where, where everybody is, is seen as one and, um, you know, none of this, you're not, when you see someone, you're not seeing race or anything. You're just seeing a hockey player striving to make the NHL to win the Stanley Cup because at the end of the day, that's the, um, that's every kid's dream growing up and, um, you know, mate, and bringing that equality in is, is huge. Well, Jujar, I want to thank you very much for joining us today on Hockey Culture. I know your time is valuable. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a blast.